<laughs> Hi, everyone. Today I have an author with me, and I'm really excited to introduce to you April Duaney, who's written a book called Self Love Reset A Little Story About Finding the Courage to Live an Extraordinary Life. And as I was learning about April's life, which is incredible and extraordinary, <laughs> um, just the, the lessons that she has learned and is imparting in this book are things that I think all women, most women, could really benefit from. So stay along for the ride today because I think you're going to be absolutely riveted by what she has to say. So April, thank you so much. I appreciate you being thank, here today. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I love how you introduced me as author. So this is my <laughs> first time being introduced as an author. So That's I'm right. like so excited about that. That's right. So April, can you tell us, first of all, what you do for a living and what you, like a little bit about your history, because it's really interesting. Yeah, so I am a first time author. Um, this is something that's been in the works for at least six years. Mm. Um, prior to this, I have a background in technology. Uh, so I was an IT auditor uh, or called a hacker for, you know, a more simplistic term. <laughs> Um, and basically, I would just go in and look at different um, tech systems related to accounting and make sure they were um, on par and things were going as expected. Um, so that was kind of the ideal state of life. So I'm in corporate America. I reached the, the peak um, and I was absolutely miserable the entire time. Uh, <laughs> I just it was slide that in. I'm at the peak. <laughs> but I'm miserable. No, exactly. You like work hard, you get to what you think success is, and then you turn around and realize that it's not what you thought it was. Uh, and it's a very scary place to be in because everyone, you know, for my whole life, this is what I was thinking. This is what I was meant to do. I'm now, you know, getting financially stable. I'm being able to support people. And I was literally suffocating. Mm -hmm. And it was such an odd time because um, it, you, it's almost paralyzing because you've worked hard to get to this one place and then it's completely opposite of what you thought it was. Right. Or what, or so, what it's all been painted to be. Exactly. From, or from other people telling you this is what you should do. Can you, tell, exactly. can you tell the story of like where you are in your Manhattan high rise and what yes. the <laughs> you have about what you really want to do? Yes. And it was odd to have that strong aha. I think I was about 25 at the time. So I had this really strong aha moment. I'm going, I'm at 300 Madison, which is, you know, prime real estate when you're in Manhattan. So this is the ideal, what you see in the movies, you know, the woman is walking with her briefcase and she's just confident and she's doing it. So I walk into the building, I go up to the 43rd floor. Um, and I just remember this sense of, um, I just felt like I couldn't breathe. You know, you, you, you can only not be yourself for so long until you really start second guessing, like, is this really what I wanted? And how I knew I actually was at a moment where I had to stop and pause is when I actually looked out the window. Now I'm at the 43rd floor and I wished that I was a cab driver. And I was like, how sad is that? But I actually am envying these cab drivers. And not to say there's anything against being a cab driver, of course, I don't know if, if anyone in your audience <laughs> <laughs> has that as an occupation, but for me at the time, I had multiple master's degrees, I was where I was meant to be, yes. and to want to be a taxi driver, it was just kind of a punch in the gut, like yeah. something is not right here. <laughs> yeah, it's like you yeah. made it, what's wrong with you, why don't you, why aren't exactly. you happy, right? Yeah, what's wrong, why are you ungrateful, this is, you know, what everyone is supposed to do. Um, so yeah, I had that moment and at the time I didn't have any children, I wasn't married. So I felt like, okay, if there's going to be a time that I'm really going to pursue something that I want, I'm going to have to do it now. And even to come to that decision was very difficult because I am a people pleasing person. Mm -hmm. And I'm always thinking about what is expected of me versus it, from an internal perspective, what do I really want? And so even starting that conversation was very difficult, mm -hmm. but then I thought, I saw my manager that was ahead of me. I was like, I don't want to be promoted. You know, I can't stay in a senior associate forever. Like I, I really started making those, you know, kind of analysis. And so I just, I stopped, I paused. I thought about what is it that I really want and what is it that's really, what am I really passionate about from the inside out? Mm -hmm. And even at that age of 25, I had forgotten what I was passionate about mm -hmm. because you can get so busy doing so many things, you're chasing so many um, goals that are not maybe authentic to you, that you can actually forget what it is that really lights you up. Right. And so it took some time, 
um, but I kind of got back to those childhood dreams. You know, I always had a passion for designing and creating. I was a kid who always tinkered with things. It really annoyed my mom that I would take things apart. <laughs> um, so I set up a one-year plan. I decided that I was going to leave corporate America, but I also didn't want to just quit my job um, because I still, I enjoy eating. So, <laughs> you know, I wanted to, <laughs> you know, I wanted to have a plan. So I saved my money for an entire year. I was eating ramen noodles and peanut butter and jelly. So that I could save my money for an entire year. Um, and I had decided that I wanted to go back to design school. Luckily, I was in New York, where it's kind of the mecca for fashion and design. And so I got uh, accepted into FIT, um, did a one-year design program, which was completely amazing. Mm -hmm. The year went by so fast. And that was one of the indicators to me. When time is going by fast and I'm really enjoying it, then I'm getting closer to my zone. Mm. Versus being in corporate America, I felt like I was having the same day over and over. It's <laughs> is like, it only Monday still? <laughs> tick, tick, exactly. Tick. Right. Yeah. The clock is not moving. And so when I started paying attention to those um, kind of internal um, checks and those internal feelings, it's when I knew that I was kind of getting on the right track. Um, so graduated summa cum laude. I was in New York. I had a lot of really great job offers. Um, and then as I was mentioning to you before, I ended up getting married that same year. Mm -hmm. And my husband is originally from a country called South Sudan in, in Africa. And so the year we got married was the first year he could actually go back to South Sudan. And South Sudan was interesting. <laughs> Um, it took some time to, you know, figure all the details out, um, but we did end up moving back home, his home. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that idea of I'm a new wife, I'm a new mom. What are the expectations for a yes. new wife? What are the expectations for a new mom? Um, and because I find you it now, you now have a degree in what you would want. Like you, you just yeah. got your thing yeah. going, mm -hmm. and then you were like, okay, we'll go do this thing for you. Exactly. Yeah. Which it was, it, it ended up not, so it, it caused a lot of issues for me um, <laughs> internally, it creates a lot of resentment. It creates a lot of like negative feelings because if you don't honor yourself, you're never going to be able to be your best self. Mm -hmm. And that's something that has taken me years to really figure out. Um, but that, yeah, when you, it's interesting. I had been a prel for so long, then you become a wife and I became the wife of Quest. You become a mom and I'm the mother of Janai, right? But then I'm still a pro. But then all of my time and all of my attention, yes. all of those things go to those other roles. Um, but if I don't now feed myself, I can't also really facilitate those roles in a way that doesn't exhaust me. You know? Right, right. It's the energy. It's exactly. Time. It's also, and like it's your, it's at an identity level. Who am exactly. I? Exactly. Mm -hmm. If I'm not being a mom, if I'm not being a wife, if I'm not serving other people in this way, who, who am I? It's a really exactly. hard thing that um, we can't, like you're saying, we can't be our best selves for others until we are our best selves for us. Right, exactly. And I also think um, what's interesting is, so during that time, uh, I started really getting into the personal development, personal health space. Mm -hmm. um, because I just, I had, I was just struggling in so many areas, but I, I knew that there was an answer somewhere. Um, but what was interesting is a lot of the voices in that space were from men mm -hmm. and you, you get the principles. I, I feel like a lot of them are sound, but I never felt like I could connect to them in a sense where I could take the book, read it and start implementing right away. Mm -hmm. And so earlier on, it just, there was such a disconnect between this idea of personal growth, this idea of self-help, but then it's not authentic. It doesn't feel personal to everyone. And so that was actually one of the first seeds that were planted in why I wanted to write my own book, mm -hmm. because I felt so ignored in the personal development space. And I was like, if I'm feeling ignored, I'm sure other women are feeling ignored as well. Um, so that was kind of the first step. Mm -hmm. Did you feel ignored because the voices are those of white men or men in general and you're a woman or is, did it also have to be um you know these are these are white experiences and i have a black experience is it both i think it's a combination one i think from a male perspective i i think there's a lot that is 
there are a lot of assumptions that are made. You know, it's like, oh, just wake up at 5 a.m. and just start <laughs> meditating. It's like, oh, you have kids on your neck here. It's hard to just start implementing a plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, your kids are waking you up, opening your eyelids. So from the male, the white male perspective, because it's a very male, white male dominated industry, the personal okay. development space. I did feel like there was a disconnect in the sense where there's this idea that we can all implement the same principles in the same way. Mm -hmm. I feel like that, that is a little bit arrogant because we're not all coming from the same place. And then secondly, I do feel like there was a, a disconnect from a white woman's perspective as well, mm -hmm. because some of the women who are writing self-help books, they have nannies, they have like assistants, you know, and it's like, well, a lot of people in my community have no idea what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, and don't have the capacity to say, okay, I can have my nanny do X, Y, and Z so I can free up time to go mm -hmm. read a book or journal or meditate. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, a lot of the times um, when I was thinking about the personal development space, it, it felt like a privileged person's space. Awesome. I was almost eavesdropping in a space that wasn't really for me. I could kind of learn the tips and figure it out and implement it on my own, but I didn't feel welcome. I didn't feel like there was a story that I could connect to it and just really run with it. Right. Um, and so as our, you know, as we become more diverse in terms of readers, I do think there should be more voices from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I do agree with the principles. I think, you know, if you're in a chaotic space, you do need to stop and pause. And a lot of the principles that I learned are things that I've implemented, mm -hmm. but I just would like to see the stories from someone that I could say, oh, okay, I know someone that has had that experience. Right. Um, right. And I just felt like that has been very missing um, in the personal development space. So when did you start writing your book? So you started like diving into personal development while you were living in South Sudan. Um, mm -hmm. you, you realized like, I need to translate everything because it's not speaking to me. And mm -hmm. I'm tired of doing this and I think other people need this. So I'm just going to start writing. So did you, you said the book has been six years in the making. You started writing when you were living in, in Africa? No, so actually six years in the making because one of the um, situations that happened while we were in South Sudan is that we ended up um, experiencing a war. Okay. Um, and so there was like this really beautiful weekend. We were at a wedding, enjoying ourselves. Um, and two days later, we were in a full on war. Um, and I can't even tell you how terrifying that is. Uh, my children were also there. And I had one of those moments where, you, I don't know if you've ever experienced something where you just know that you're not going to actually make it, you know, it's like, this is your, this is the end. Uh -huh. And when you're in one of those situations and you start thinking, wow, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. Now I don't have the time to do it. It's, it's, it's really messes with your mind. And so that's when, when I was thinking of all the things I wished I had done, writing a book was one of those things. Okay, gotcha. um, Because for me, I've always wanted to empower women. I've always wanted to inspire people to just be their best, even if it's scary, even if you don't know where you're going to get the confidence, even if you don't have anyone around you that's cheering you mm. on, I wanted to be that person. Mm. And so at that moment when it was like, wow, I've really wasted a lot of time here, you know? Um, so that's kind of when I really got serious about, we eventually obviously survived that situation. Mm -hmm. um, but that moment I started taking things more seriously. Um, but then there's also this idea that you can continue to reset. You know, that was now six years ago and I was okay. fired up. I need to write this book. I need to get it out. And then something comes up, you know? Life, and then Life gets lifey, right? life exactly life gets in the way um and i think for some people they think they only have one chance mm. you know i can only go after something once and if it doesn't work the first time then it must not have been meant for me and just like you restart your computer your phone and everything else you don't just do it once you do it over and over and yeah. over again and you know that's a part of what the book is you can keep resetting it's not a failure if you start something it doesn't work out the way that you want. You've learned something from that experience. So just keep resetting until you're on the path that feels authentic and feels extraordinary for you. Um, and I so that's this. kind of, yeah, just using all those life lessons and giving people the space to, you can make mistakes. You're learning something, but use that in the next step going forward. It sounds like what you're talking about is personal resiliency. Yes. Mm -hmm. This idea that 
you might have thought about it and not done anything and that doesn't mean you can't do anything in the future or you might have tried it and it didn't go anywhere and you're you're telling yourself you're a failure but that's a lie like it really is about mm -hmm. bouncing yourself back from these i mean your your story of your life so far is is this example right like oh mm -hmm. i trained for this and i got the job and i realized i was unhappy a lot of people would have kind of gripped and stayed there and been like, this is the thing I'm supposed to do, like white knuckle the rest of your life. Can you imagine at right. 25 saying, this is the shitty thing I've got to do for the rest of my life, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. And so your story exactly. over and over again is a story of personal resilience, self-examination, personal resilience. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And I find that to be very important. And I think we're always in a state of transformation. Yeah. But sometimes we get stuck. Like if you make a decision at 20, it doesn't have to be the same thing you're doing at 50. Right. You know, you can transform yourself. That's why we're alive. As long as you have breath in your body, if what you're doing right now isn't working, you can reset yourself. Um, and you don't need anyone's permission to do that. And I think for women, yes. sometimes we feel like we need a sign or we need permission or the sign is get up and decide what you want and do the work to get there. Well, I love um, that you notice your own signs. You notice mm -hmm. the signs like, I can't breathe. That's a sign, right? Like, right. This, this, exactly. I feel scared. This, that's a sign, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You and I were talking about your daughters and how they're budding tennis stars and it wasn't working in Africa and we're gonna come home. That's a sign, right? Like something's not working right. for my family. I love how you're very aware of the signs mm -hmm. for you when you know it's time to change. Yeah, I'm very aware. And I think one of the things, though I have this dynamic where I do like to please people, I don't have a problem looking like foolish yeah. or looking a certain way. Like even when I'm playing with my kids, they're like, mom, you're so silly. We're outside. People can see. I'm like, okay. you know. <laughs> so I, and I think sometimes people are really thinking, okay, I want to go in this direction or I want to write a book or I want to start a podcast, but what will this person think? What will my colleagues think? What will this person think? And my idea is, first of all, those people are probably not paying your bills. So oh. what they think doesn't really matter. And, you know, I don't think everyone has to get to like a near death experience to figure out what is it that you really, or what are you really here for? What are you really passionate about? What is it that really lights you up? Um, and for me, that's really what an extraordinary, extraordinary life is about. It's yeah. about using your power, your passion to impact and empower other people. Um, so yeah, that's really what the basis of the book is about, how so to get to that step. Let's talk about the book. Um, the, the book is a nonfiction book, but you wrote it like a narrative. Yes. It yes. sounds almost yeah. like, um, like a, what is the, like a parable almost like a, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So tell us about your main character, jo Joan. Yes. Um, so I wrote the book actually as a parable because I did a bit of research on how people best remember information. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the bestsellers were written in parables versus some of the other, I don't know, maybe nonfiction, but more kind of workbook guides. Um, people felt it didn't really connect with them. It was kind of preachy um, and unrelatable. So I, I didn't want that. Um, and so basically the book is a narrative. It's actually about three women, um, Joan, Michelle, and Miss Tyson, okay. who are on a journey of uh, living an extraordinary life, but they're each at different phases of life. So, so Joan is kind of the mom that's burnt out. She's always playing catch up. Um, she's always behind. She's kind of med thinking, I wish my life could be different, but I feel stuck. I don't know how to get from where I am to where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. um, Michelle is, um, has kind of gone through that journey. She's done the hard work and now she's in the midst of living her kind of best life. Okay. And then Ms. Tyson, um, she's now the guide. So oh. she's now reflecting on her life and saying, hey, these are the lessons that I've learned throughout my life. And now she's kind of paying that forward. And so kind of the journey of Ms. Tyson um, now gives us the principles to go through to now get from getting stuck, from being stuck to now living that extraordinary life. Um, and the reason why I use almost like a generational narrative mm -hmm. um, is that's how my family is. You know, if I, if I sit down with my grandmother um, who passed away a few years ago and like my aunt, it's like the most powerful experience for them to share, you know, what they went through. Um, and like, for instance, one of my older aunts, she uh, kind of in this time of, um, I guess, civil transformation and, you know, this new love for humanity, she actually lived through the civil rights time and she was in a segregated school. And so 
you know, just to hear her story then and see some of the things we're still struggling with. Um, it's just very interesting, I think, to get that perspective of older generations mm -hmm. and see what they went through, see some of the regrets that they had, mm -hmm. you know, so my grandmother was a teacher and she had four children, but she always wanted to do something on her own. She always wanted to have like her own business, but she never felt like she could prioritize she could. that. Yeah. So I just wrote it in that perspective because I wanted um, my community in particular to be able to relate to it and yes. see personal development is for everyone. It's not a privilege for one particular group. It's something for everyone. And mm -hmm. I wanted them to feel invited. I wanted them mm -hmm. to feel welcomed to the conversation. And ultimately, I wanted it to feel, you know, practical, relatable, and actionable. Yeah. You know, I went through pretty much all of the reviews. I told you I'm a nerd. So before I wrote the book, <laughs> I went through all of the reviews in this personal development space. And a lot of the reviews were saying, okay, one, it's preachy and we can't really relate to it. And two, what are the action items? It's great to hear someone else's story about how you, maybe you were struggling with alcohol or something and you overcame it. But what are the steps? What, are, what is the process that I can use to get there? Um, so I definitely wanted it to be, you know, very actionable as well. So people love a good how. They, 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 they like to know what, and they like to know why, but they want to know how. That is the biggest thing. Exactly. So that's like <laughs> how people change their life, right? So tell me, did you do a lot of research or was this all just kind of within you and it just came out when you let it go? I think it was a combination. I think from all of the self-help, I call myself a self-help student. So mm -hmm. I, I've read pretty much every self-help book. Um, and so I kind of started pulling back from those lessons that I had already learned and implemented, like what worked, what actually didn't work. Um, and so part of it was research from kind of what's existing, but then I also married it with my own experience. Mm -hmm. um, and each of the lessons are things that I actually have done mm -hmm. and things that have been helpful for me. Um, like one of the most powerful ones was letting go of yesterday, mm -hmm. which for me was very difficult because, um, you know, for the last, I would say 40 years, I've been investing in other people and mm -hmm. not in myself. Right. And that brings up a lot of resentment when you feel like, um, let's say you're in your marriage and you feel like you've made those sacrifices for other people and you're like, Hey, when, it, when am I going to be invited to focus on me? You mm -hmm. know? Um, so now even going forward, how do you let go of the baggage of the past? Right. And know? not carry and that for me, forward with resentment, right? Not let, exactly. like let go of resentment. Yes. Yeah. Which is I very heavy. The, I think that's the first, I'm looking at the Amazon, this mm -hmm. took, this book, you have to go get this book because it's on Amazon right now. It just got published. She's like, April, like we're just talking to somebody who just has a brand new book out. It's so exciting. And <laughs> your number, the number one thing that they say is let go of yesterday and embrace your future. That's the number one. Exactly. Can you talk mm -hmm. about some of the other lessons that you, I want people to read the book and they will because it's a story. I agree with you. Story is everything. Story mm -hmm. is how people relate to things. But what are some of the other big lessons that you know women need to learn in order to have the life that they really want? Right. I think one of the next big lessons, I call it crossing the chasm. Mm. And so for me, I'm the type of person who can be good at a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And so at times I can feel a bit scattered. And because I'm resourceful, a lot of people will reach out to me like, oh, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. And then my schedule gets overwhelmed. I get exhausted. And then I have nothing left for me. Yeah. And so crossing the chasm is really about figuring out where you are today, very honestly, where you are today. Are you in debt? Are you out of shape? Are you whatever the case is? And then where do you want to be? Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, I was in a place where I'm people pleasing and I'm, I'm have all these different projects going on, but I actually want to be an author. Yes. You know, so when you actually set that intention and say, this is where I want to be, then when people are approaching you with different projects and X, Y, and Z, you can say, this is not a part of my plan going forward. And I so that. I unfortunately can help you, would love to, but unfortunately I have other <laughs> priorities right now. Right. Um, and so when you, when you go from where you are to where you want to be, there's a lot of things in the middle. So there's excuses, right? Mm. So if I'm now broke and have bad credit and I want to become a millionaire, what are those excuses that yeah. I have that are in between there? Um, and so the exercise is really just finding, identifying where you are figuring out where you want to be and what are those things that are blocking you. So for me to be an author, I could say, oh, I don't have enough time. I have young kids, you know, 
list all of the different excuses, mm -hmm. you know, and once you have those excuses listed, you have to think of what are the possible solutions. So yes, I have young kids and I want to be an author. What's the solution? I can wake up earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Or I could give them an extra hour of screen time so I can just focus, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and when you start seeing that possible solutions list growing, it also encourages you like, wow, okay, I can actually get to that next stage where I want to be. Um, yep. And it's within your control. It's not something that you have to wait for someone to grant you permission or you have to oh, wait for someone to do something right. for you to make progress. Um, and so just those little steps, I think, really make a big difference. Build your confidence. Um, but knowing where you want to go, I think is very important because a lot of people can say they're not happy with where they are. You know, they're complaining about the, the state that they're in, but then they don't know where they want to go. That is so true. And that just adds more confusion and more chaos. So I think yeah. for me, it's really getting clear on where I wanted to go, um, figuring out what were the excuses Sending that were away. in the way okay. of that, but then also being accountable to creating solutions. Yeah. And maybe you don't implement all of the solutions right away. Maybe you pick one to start with. You know, and once you pick one, you continue to make progress and then you, you'll get to that next phase. I love how logical you make this all sound. And that, <laughs> um, but, I, but I know that, and, and I know that you are logical, but mm -hmm. I also know that everything you're saying is not easy and that I'm right. sure there was so much soul searching that you had to do. Um, laying out your excuses is one of the hardest things that people have to do because it's like looking at all your ugly parts and saying right. okay there they are i don't judge them there they are and then that awareness and the mm -hmm. vulnerability so i love yeah. that you like laid it all out and that you've created a how-to book for people and mm -hmm. also you're just a great model of like somebody who has done all the hard things right like, in a place where you want to be like you're an author now yeah. you're i know like i'm so excited to even say that like i can't yes. even tell people the burden of being where you don't want to be mm -hmm. and to being in, accomplishing what you want it is a very difficult journey yeah. there were so many times in the midst of this book i was like man i cannot I think of another i i can't think of another word to put here <laughs> But when you really are clear about where you want to go, and it's not easy. I think you definitely need to have people around you that can support you and to help yeah. you keep moving. Um, but then I also think as women, we don't give ourselves enough grace because I am very hard on everyone around me, including myself. Like I have high expectations for everyone around me. Mm -hmm. But if other people around me fail and they need support, I'm also going to be supportive of them. And so one day I thought, why don't I give myself that same grace and that mm. same support? You know, I'm working hard. I have things that I want to accomplish. And it doesn't always work out exactly how you want it. So sometimes we also have to be the friend to ourselves yes. that we are to other oh, people. So good. And when you can do, like, if your friend calls you with the same issue that you're currently having, how would you advise them? You wouldn't be hard on her and just say, go, just, you know, you wouldn't, you would give her some love and kindness. Mm -hmm. And so we have to also be able to do that for ourselves and say, hey, okay, this was a bad day, but I'm going to pick up tomorrow and I'm going to keep going. I love this. So tell, let's talk about like the marketing of the book and how the book's getting out there. Are you going on a, on a book tour or is like, did you, did, is the publisher working with you? So tell me about how this is getting out into the world. Yeah. So um, COVID kind of messed the plans yes. up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Um, so now I'm really focusing because the idea, of course, is to do a book tour and you're, you know, visiting a lot of spaces. So we're really focusing on creating a virtual um, kind of plan of doing a book tour and working with different um, book clubs and talking to different podcasters who mm. um, their audience would benefit from from the book. Yes. Um, so we'll start there. The next phase is having a paperback book. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by the end of the year, we could now implement that kind of road trip plan. Uh, but for now, I'm just, you know, talking about it, getting it out there. Um, people are enjoying it. So that to me is like the biggest compliment that someone sent me a screenshot and there was like a quote in there like, girl, are you going to get it together? And they had like a reflective <laughs> moment. So, so far, I just love that it's done. And um, mm. I can just say I have this piece of work out in the world yes. and it's actually affecting people. Um, so yeah, that we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear in terms of the physical, um, 
book tour. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, I'm just kind of connecting with different audiences who could benefit from, from the narrative. Well, I appreciate that you took the time to, to connect with me and to share this with my audience. Um, I'm trying to become more aware of what life is like for people who are not white, like people of color and women of color. And I want to learn more about that. So I appreciate that you have let me in to that world. Thank and you. I'm excited to, well, I'm excited to read it. It's on my Kindle and I'm excited to share it. Um, and I just like, I love, this is fascinating. I love talking to you. I love talking to a woman who had a vision, made the vision come true, even though it wasn't easy. And I just wanted, I love sharing these stories with my audience. Yeah, is, the best awesome. place, is the best place to find the book on Amazon? Amazon, yes. yes. So for now, Amazon, um, you can search self-love reset. Um, yes. And then I can also give you the link. But yes, that's the best place to yeah. um, get the book now. So I just yeah. want to remind everybody, the name of the book is called Self Love Reset, a little story about finding the courage to live an extraordinary life. And the author is April Duaney. And remember, she's an author because she had a vision and she took the time to make it happen. And like your story is not a story of ease. And like, oh, I just kicked back and wrote my book. You how you you had so much upheaval in your life and you made it happen and it's such a i think it's such an inspirational story because all of us if we i love your point about we have to know where we're going and we can't yeah. do that if our world is so noisy and we're always focused on other people and that i feel exactly. is like a take home message for you you deserve to turn around and look at your own life examine your own life right and I think for me, it's just the small thing that I say to myself, personal development for me is really living from the inside out and not the outside in. Mm -hmm. And I realized for decades, I was living from the outside in. What do other people expect? What do other people want? When I shifted it from the inside out, then my confidence started to build. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, you start making the plans that you can execute. So that's just how I like to look at it, looking from the inside out. I'm so glad Rona put us in touch with each other. Thank you again for taking I the time. Know. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> well, I'm going to link the show in the comments below. And I mean, link, link the book in the comments below. <laughs> and please reach out to April. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I can put you in touch with her. And I'm excited to see where else you show up in the media. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.